talking to you, True, about these tips and these tricks. What the? What, what? There it is. <laughs> oh, you know why that happens? When I start recording, I think it puts something new on my pasteboard. Uh, but here it is. And this is what we're going to be talking about. So, uh, I've done uh, relatively decent tutorials on the first beginnings of how to make your flash work for you. But now, it's time for the extras. It is time for the extras. So you can, uh, you know, really take your flashing to the next level. Good. Good. So, in Flash, you have the option to either A, go up here and select what you want, or go up here and select what you want, or, and I do mean or, you can use hotkeys. And they can be really helpful and get things done really fast. You know, there's stuff like, oh, I just drew a line. I don't want it. Undo. Wait, I did want it. Redo. That's Control Y, by the way. Redo. In the newer versions, it's Control Shift Z, I think. But anyway, this is, uh, it's helpful for doing stuff fast. Oh, uh, I want to get rid of that. I don't want to go up to Edit and hit Clear. I'll just hit Backspace. Okay? Everybody uses them. If you, you know, at least one or two, probably, without even thinking about it. Uh, but you have the option to use exclusively your keyboard for everything in Flash. So you would even never have to click any of these or any of these. Ever. And the way that you do that is either by using the default hotkeys in Flash, which there isn't even one for everything in this in these menus, or you can make your own. You can make custom hot keys. Yes, you can. And the way you do that is uh, in, in your edit menu at the top here, you go keyboard shortcuts, and then it'll bring up this window. And this is, a, this is one magical window right here. It has a parallel to everything that you see here. Um, it starts off by default in the drawing menu commands, which is all this stuff. And you can like drop down and see every kind of thing there is, and then she see the shortcut for it over here on the right. Uh, there's other things like the tools hotkeys, here you can see the hotkeys bound to each tool. And then you can change stuff like once you've uh, launched your movie, the stuff you might use. Uh, but t tools and drawing menu are the main ones that you're going to be changing if you're making custom hotkeys. I'm not even sure what this does. So don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to make your own hotkeys. First, uh, it'll say something like Macromedia Standard or Adobe uh, Flash Standard or Default or something. And what you're going to do is hit this beautiful, I mean, this beautiful button. Uh, if you hover over it, it'll say Duplicate, Duplicate Set. No, it's Kate. And then you click it. And then you get to name it. You call it My Sweet keys boom and then it'll have the exact same ones ingrained into it as the standard because it was a copy and then you can start changing and you have to do that because if you're just on the standard you can't start editing anything it'll be like nope so you go to yours my sweet keys and now uh, say you want to change your undo command you'd go to edit uh, undo, undo, control Z. It's the, f it's the first one. It'll have undo and then the name of the action that you just did previously. So here's what you might do. Down here, once it is highlighted, you'll see what hotkey is on it. And then if you want to get rid of that one and open that up to be used ever again, then you would hit this and then you'd hit minus. Now control Z does nothing to anything ever. Say so you want it to be control K. Okay, so now it's giving you this little thing that says this shortcut is already assigned to the align command. Oh no, so if you went into down here, you went to modify align, I think, uh, or wherever it is, then it'll be, it'll say control K is applied to it. But right now you're up here in, in the edit one and you're, you want your undo to be control K. And the way you do that is you type in control K after you've hit plus, you hit change, 
and then it'll give you a dialog box where it says it's already assigned to something and then what you want to do is hit reassign so it'll go wherever it's assigned to and then it'll do essentially the same thing as selecting it hitting the minus and then it'll apply it to what you're on right now and you can see that here I'll do some lines and I'm gonna now do control K oh oh dear what has happened oh no go back into your keyboard shortcuts go to edit and you'll see something like oh it didn't it didn't change what in the what oh no hit minus just like before control K change reassign hit change again just hit it a bunch of times like a thousand and then hit okay and now that was control K on the keyboard sometimes when you are making your own custom hotkeys flash likes to uh, revert if you don't hit change afterwards and it's really finicky and if you just keep going back in and changing it and hitting change you know it'll work eventually I've got mine to work oh did I just do that on mine oh shoot no I don't want that <laughs> I was supposed to be doing it on my sweet keys but my sweet keys are gone <laughs> okay don't worry about it I'm gonna put this back now because um, I don't want that there change to control Z save it as control Z are we good yeah we're back that was control Z okay so now you know how to make your own custom hot keys yeah woo and then you save them somewhere I don't remember because I did it so long ago but uh, I think uh, maybe you can export it as a HTML so you duplicate Andrews and then export and then you save it as a .html file you know what it saves it inside of your flash so just keep it in there that's I guess that's where I keep mine so good good on that and moving on in in other news oh by the way so if you're trying to think of like that was one of my custom hotkeys right there oh my goodness how do I even begin to talk about how to make your own hotkeys well it's just what feels right for your fingers you know because for me if this is my keyboard I don't like to be reaching over with my left hand a lot of the hotkeys in flash require you to like do a, a modifier like control or alt or shift and then like use your right hand to hit a key over here or something like that and then up here is your timeline editing uh, things f5 6 and 7 and then f8 is for making symbols I've made a whole flurry of hotkeys where like if I want to make a symbol I just draw a line select it and then hit control space and it automatically makes it a symbol and that's using a command here are my commands oh boy commands are a whole uh, cat in a bag <laughs> if you I'll show you the history window in one second I'm talking about hotkeys right now so what I've done is like I've put all my hotkeys over here within the reach of my left hand so I never ever have to move over here except when I'm typing out words um, and you can do that too or you can just do whatever feels good for your fingers just play around with it you know look at what flash has by default I still use all of the default keys for my tools uh, just because I don't think I could relearn them I've got it so ingrained into my head where everything is that you know it's just um, too far along I could probably start and in a year I'd be good but for right now I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it it's probably the best best idea especially when I'm telling you uh, the hotkeys for all these things it's good to have some that are the defaults anyway uh, you can you can put anything I have all my modify things I have like uh, I have my align put on certain ones so if I wanted to uh, put this thing in the center I just do control shift X and Z for horizontal and vertical center. If I want to uh, put something on the right side of the stage, I do Control Alt or not. I do Control Shift. What in the what? There. What is it? What is this? It's something. You know, I've got so many. I forget them at a certain point. <laughs> Say I wanted to rotate something. I've got one for that. And that's where making commands comes into play. So these go hand in hand with hotkeys here is how you make commands uh, if you go to window 
and I'm going to talk about every window in here in a different video. But if you go to uh, other panels and you hit history, then you get this. You may have never seen this. Maybe you have it by default in your Flash or your uh, Photoshop. And what it is, it'll always be on top. It keeps track of everything you do in Flash. So, like, select, delete, select, rotate. You know, it's, it's remembering all the stuff that you do as you do it. And then it writes it down as like a, a line of Java or whatever language it's in. Um, I don't know, you can see view as JavaScript. So this is all the stuff that I've done in this document so far just for this tutorial. And the way that you would make a command, ooh, a command, is something like this. Say you want to have something do a certain amount of rotation and then move a certain amount just with one key on your keyboard. So you want it to do all of this and then this with one click. Well, here's how you would do it. You do what you want to have happen, select it, it'll start on the rotation and then it'll move that much. So it rotates 28.9 degrees and then it moves 136 pixels on the x-axis. Now here, here's how you make a command out of that. You select any amount of things that you want to have happen. It could be just one thing. A lot of mine are just one thing because they don't have keyboard shortcuts. Here is what you do. You select them, you hit save steps as a command. You call it what you want, rotate, then move right. You can call it, you know, fish. And then if you go up to your commands window, commands, you will have this as a command now. And commands are kind of finicky, like that other thing, like making hotkeys are, because they jump all over the place with the hotkeys that you have bound to them. If you have a command that doesn't have a hotkey, it's great. It always stays that way. But once you start putting uh, shortcuts onto commands, things get all wibbly-wobbly. So you're going to have to go in and remap your shortcuts for these if you want to have them every time that you make a new one because it has like an order and it put like the next one down onto this one before control space was symbolized and control alt w was up but because it goes alphabetically it kind of ruins it you can fix it maybe by always naming it with a number or like z anyway um that's how you do a command so let me show that in action now if i've got a light pink uh, with a black outline rectangle selected and I go up to commands and I say rotate then move right BAM it runs that command and you can do it as many times as you want so now it'll rotate even more and keep moving it to the right yeah and if you want to bound a hotkey to those bind you would go keyboard shortcuts commands and then do it just like before good 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 great done and learned and dealt and hotkeys uh, if anybody yeah it's whatever you know what just come up with your own hotkeys it, it's it's a fun it's a, it's exciting because then you start doing you know anything that you want in flash really quickly all's all let's talk next about some helpful tips that I have learned over the while uh, firstly say you like what you got going on here you like your timeline up here, color here, align, library, da da da. If you go Windows, and I talked about this a little bit in the first thing, and then you go Workspace Layout, then you can save your current workspace, which is all of these windows in their positions, as a, a thing, as a layout. And then if you ever want to go to that layout, you would go in here, and it would be there, and then you could you know just click it and it will go to the one that you saved default is always there this is what default flash 8 looks like pretty basic um, I haven't deviated very much from the default and then here's what my favorite one looks like <laughs> it's basically the same I took off parameters in the action script that's it but that's how you make custom workspaces and save them next let's talk about some drawing tips so, 
say you've got, say you want to make a moon, right? Your background is uh, space colored, and you're digging, you know, making a moon shape, a crescent. There's not a very easy way to do it in Flash by default, so you kind of have to um, do it by hand. And here's how I might do it. You make a circle with no outline, and then you grab that circle, and then you hold control on your selection tool to duplicate it. But instead of dragging it out there, you would drag it maybe right here. And now this is selected, and this is not. Right now, this whole circle still exists. See, well, uh, I guess not. But either way, the point I'm getting at is here's exactly what I do. I hold control, let go, click this one, and then click this one, and delete it. But I'm starting to think maybe you can just do that, and it's the same thing. <laughs> there are some times when you can't do that, though. There are instances where you have to do that double select, because duplicating is the same as putting it down, but maybe, like, pasting isn't. See? So if you pasted something, then you would have to do this, and then that, to get it to take away that chunk. Anyway, that's how you make a crescent. I'll do it again. Right there. So yeah, if you're holding control, then it's the same as putting it down and then using it to take away bits. There. Uh, how do you want to make a triangle? Well, it's, there's a lot of ways, but here's one. If you go to Polystar and you go to Options and you set this as 3 and then you do that, that's a triangle. And you can make those out the wazoo and it'll make them from the center unless... Yeah, you can't even hold Alt with the Polystar. I forgot about that. Good. Or, if you already got your rectangle tool out and you just want to be quick, you might make a square and then select it and then get your uh, free transform tool, hold Control, hold Alt at the same t or Shift at the same time, Control and Shift, and then you can just drag those two points to the center. And then there's a triangle right fast for you. Uh, sometimes it's a lot easier than grabbing the polystar tool and then setting the number of points. You know, it's whatever you like. Next, when I first did drawings in Flash and I needed stars, I would I would do it like this. I would make a billion, billion little dots, and I think I already talked about this in one other tutorial, but I'm just going to recap uh, because this was immensely helpful for me. If you do this and then you make it little and you duplicate it a thousand times, like this, it's fine, and it'll work for small amounts of stars, but after a certain point, like if you make it a symbol, and then you start duplicating that symbol, oh dear, okay, my symbolize uh, command is off, but here's how you would do it, lie to die to die, stars and stars and stars and so many, it lags Flash so hard, Flash can't take it, it's so many little shapes, it's, it's once you start getting like a billion of these. Oh, I swear. See, look, it's already... Uh, I can't take it. But if you use the outline tool... Jeez, it was already... Okay, it's having problems. If you get your brush or your pencil tool, and you make this huge, and you make it star-colored, and you change this to speckled, or whatever it's called, st stippled, stipled, wow. <laughs> you make this tiny. You make this random, and this very sparse and then you hit on you hit drawing object on watch what happens stars and you can do those over and over I think it starts to take over so if you just make that a symbol uh, it's doing that thing again I need to get rid of this command if you want to get rid of commands by the way you go to manage saves com saved commands and you select the one you want either rename it or delete it Okay, is this working now? Yep, alright. And then it'll put your order of your hotkeys back. And then you can start... Stars out the wazoo, so many! And Flash, while it's having a problem now, it also has probably a billion more stars than it did when I was using the brush tool. And you don't need this many. There you go. And it'll look like this when you grab it. It won't look like a thousand little dots, because you're using your... line tool. Yes! I, and, hey, here's another thing. While we're on it, I don't know if I showed this, but you can break apart uh, lines. So this is what this line looks like, right? And then it's wrapping this huge outline around it. Let me make that thinner. 
say I wanted this to be broken up into uh, shapes and not strokes, you know, fills, these ones. Well, you would select it, you would go to modify, and then you can't do it with break apart. Well, you're going to have to break this apart because I, it was a drawing object, remember? I had a, this on, but I'm just showing you about lines. If I want this to all be shapes or fills, you select it. You go modify. You go shape and convert lines to fills. And now, now, they're all little bitty fills. Look at that. And then they won't they won't look like a one line, they'll look like a bunch of dots. Where this one still looks like a line. Yep. Good and dealt. Okay, okay. Here's a quick drawing tip for if you want to do shading really fast. Uh, instead of by hand. Say you've got a circle. I did this a lot when I was starting off. Or you've got a circle. And you want it to have a shadow on this side, but you want it to look kind of ruggedy and you know like it's got texture to it get a brush get a drawing object put it on black and you can do this with whatever color like white would make it look like highlights put this opacity down and without the drawing object this is what would happen they would merge and you wouldn't see the overlap but if you turn on drawing object then they won't be able to go over each other and you'll get stuff like this oh oh where it's all the same opacity, 22%, but when you get 22% and 22% over each other, it's 44, and then here is 66, and this will be 88, and then whatever. Or maybe that's not how it works, but it's, it's you know, it looks good. And then you could do stuff like this. Oh, oh, oh. See, really, really fast uh, kind of cell shading look to stuff. So you can quickly add highlights or detail or whatever you want. Good. And you can even erase drawing objects. There you go. That's a tip. Next. Oh, if your flash is having trouble uh, rendering stuff, like those stars, for example, um, but if you maybe you have a lower end computer and flash is having a problem, if you go to view and then you go to preview mode, you can change the level of quality at which your workspace renders your animation or drawing. I have it at full because my computer is just fine. Flash 8 isn't very um, CPU intensive or whatever it uses, but if yours is having problems, go to preview mode, set it to fast. Outlines is the lowest you can go because it doesn't even display the thickness of like lines, but if you go fast, then you'll start to see it's kind of got ragged, haggard edges. Um, and it'll always be a certain amount of raggediness, depending on how zoomed in you are. Uh, but it loads a lot more quickly. So that's that might be something that you need. But for now, I'm going to leave it on full. Good, 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 good. Make progress. Okay. Select to extend. Oh, hey, hey. When you're just drawn... Uh, thing. There are so many ways to work with it and turn it into what you want. Say I want this to become a car, but I started with this. Well, here's how I might go about it. I chop off the bottom by selecting it and then deleting it. And I'd get a, f uh, a front, you know, a place for the engine by selecting some of this and then extending it. There's one way you might work with something. And then I need a trunk as well. I do the same thing. Okay, it's coming along, but I got to get some places for the wheels. So I might use that uh, trick I was talking about earlier. But it's important to remember when you want to cut stuff out of other stuff, it either has to be like selected. So I would make the tire maybe like this, and then I would drag it here, and then I would select the car, and then I would select this. And by doing that, it deletes wherever this was, and then I could hit delete and it would get rid of it. Or the easier way is just make this a different color, you know, and then it'll automatically make them different. Because if I had tried to do that with the red color, it would have done this. Oh no, I can't grab it again. So using different colors to cut stuff out of other stuff 
is a fast way to delete uh, certain shapes. Yeah. Pretty helpful. Good, good, good. And, you know, say you wanted maybe like an antenna. Uh, you could either draw a little line straight up, but that doesn't look very good. So I might like put a little bit of imperfection here and then get my selection tool and just stretch them right up to get a really thin line. Or I might have even just like used my control click function and then made this and then just dragged these back down. You know, just using all the tools that we learned about when we learned about the selection tool. There's, uh, you can bend just by single clicking. You can control click to make a vertex. You can, uh, well, that's it. <laughs> but also just using like that to delete stuff and the whatnot. You know, there's lots of ways to work with things. Deselect a selection. That's what I've been talking about. That's this whole thing. Right? Like, you've got one thing that's the same color, and you want it to take some out of it. You select, then select, then get rid of it. Good, good. Library expand. I didn't talk about this when I was in my library tutorial. Here is what I mean. If you are over here, you got two little buttons right here. This one changes your sorting order, uh, so it'll go one, two, three, four right now, but now when I click it, it's four, three, two, one. You know, it just goes reverse alphabetical. And then if this had a D at the beginning, dimble, then it would put that first, even if it was number three, just like that. B is before D and D is before S. But if they're all S's, then then one is before two. And this button right here, this will expand your library, or once you've expanded it, it'll be contract it or narrow it. And that button will show up even if you did it manually. It'll make it as small as it can be. And it's just, it's small enough to fit these things at the bottom in. Yeah, good deal. Or maybe it's this stuff at the top. I don't know, it's the minimum lowest common denominator. Straightening after reshaping. I don't even, I wrote these things down as I was doing them. But like, say you didn't, like sometimes, a lot of times actually, when I'm working on something, I don't really mind, like if I wanna make a good spoon, I don't mind if it looks bad right off the bat. Like this can turn into a good spoon, even though this is kinda wish wash down here and up here it's kinda iffy. What I might do is first select just that part of it and then straighten it. I'm using a hotkey for straighten. I'll do it, I'll just show you. Straighten, and then the handle looks good. See, if I had done that for all of it though, it would have, well, it didn't in that case, but it might have made something that I didn't want. So I like, I might just select the handle and make that straight. And then go down here, and instead of using straighten, I might use the smoothen function, just like this, you know? What wasn't a very great spoon is now, it's okay. And say, maybe I want this part of the handle to get thin at the end. Well, I'll just do some reshaping. And perhaps this was kind of still wishy-washy. I could just straighten it up. And it looks fine. I might chop off a bit right here. And then you got yourself a good dipper. Maybe it's even a ladle right there. And then see, oh, I've got a little problem here. I'll try and sort that out with the straighten function. It didn't quite get it, but it got it to a point where I only needed to click and drag one time to fix it. Yeah. Straightening and smoothening. Hey, I didn't talk about this, but you can break apart symbols. Any container can be broken apart, even text. So we got all the kinds. We got drawing objects. We've got uh, groups right there. I hit control G. Uh, then you got your text, and then, boy, I don't even remember, uh, and then you, you just got your three kinds. This is a movie clip, here is a button, and this one will be a graphic. And the way you break them apart is hitting Control-B while they are selected. And what breaking apart means is it'll rip it up to its 
to whatever, whatever is inside of it. So right now this is a drawing object. If I go inside by double clicking, it's got shapes inside, right? If I go out of it and I hit Control B, it'll uncontain it. It'll make it just a normal thing, and it's a shape now. Same for this. There were drawing objects inside of here. Break it up, back to the drawing object, and then break it even farther, back to shapes. Everything that I pasted right there. Everything can be Control B and Control B. First with text, it'll break it to letters, and then to shapes. You know, Control B. That's how you make stuff simple. Lastly, uh, what I did for my first however long of using Flash to get pictures out of it was to just go and um, screenshot my document, and then I would paste that into Paint. And uh, after that, oh my gosh, I'm not proud of the things I did. But I don't know what I was trying to find a picture, but it doesn't matter. Say you've got a really nice uh, apple. Okay, there it is. And it's got a stem. Wow, I want to export this. There are a few ways to do it. Here's the first you can go File, Export, Image, and then save it right wherever you want it. Call it Apple. And then you can save it as any kind you want that's here. I use PNGs because they have an alpha channel. And so when you hit save, it'll give you another box that'll ask you how you want to export it. It'll normally look like this. It'll be the dimensions of your document. Mine is 800 by 450. And then it'll ask you what you want to include. And that is either your whole document, which is all of this white stuff, or your minimum image area which it'll put a bounding box around everything you have in the frame that you're exporting and it'll just export anything that is there even if it's outside of your document size right now it's telling me that my apple is 254 by 342 pixels and that's what I would get if you're using a PNG then you can export with an alpha channel uh, you can put a filter on it at the last second I never do it um, and then you can change whether it exports interlaced or smooth or it dithers solid colors I don't take that box sometimes I use interlaced when I'm gonna be doing keying later like on a green screen type of thing uh, but just leave it on smooth for arty, artsy pictures and also this one took me so long to understand because flash uses vectors you can export at whatever resolution you want if you want to make a poster out of this apple that goes on the side of a building, you can put it up to 2,000. You can get upwards of 3,000 if you do it right. Um, sometimes at higher resolutions, it starts to stop exporting part of it. Um, but if you're within you know, 2,880, you're generally safe. Uh, yeah, and then it'll tell you how many dots per inch it's putting in the final export. I'll leave this at like, uh, and I'll put this at the full document size and put this to like uh, 3000. And we'll see what that looks like if you hit export. And then I go to where it is, pick chers, there it is. And then you can, you can see what high resolution it's at. You know, that's how you export images. Good, good, good for you to do that, and those were some flash tips. Whoa! Flash... Yep. <laughs> anyway, it stopped working, so that's the end of that. <laughs> you have a fantastic day.